Hello, hello everyone. It's Martin, aka Anders, and in keeping with trend, I have another computing competitive for you today. Whereas yesterday we covered the last Ignition Series event for Europe, today we're going to be covering Pop Flash, the last Ignition Series event for North America. Let's hop right in. Pop Flash was one of the most highly anticipated events of all of the Ignition series, being hosted by CSGO mainstays Flashpoint. Flashpoint, known for their high quality production as well as their great shoulder content, carried that over to Pop Flash, with the breaks filled with tons of stories of player narratives as well as general strategy around the game. All in all, a great event. Getting more into the specifics of format, Pop Flash featured a similar group stage to that we saw in the level Clash 2 in that it was a bracketed group stage. The slippery caveat that will come with a format like this, as I mentioned in the video covering the level Clash, is that the winning teams in groups will have played less games, thus having a lesser impact in play rate statistics, and so that's something that we'll keep track of as we go through this information. Moving into spoilers. The teams that made it out of the group stage were Cloud9, Envy, Sentinels, and Dignitas. A huge upset coming in the form of Dignitas after they threw TSM out in the group stage, beating them not once, but twice in relatively handy fashion. Despite that phenomenal performance of upsetting one of North America's highly established top teams, Dignitas was the first to go out in the playoffs, quickly followed by Cloud9, meaning that we saw a final including Sentinels, an expected North American factor at this point, but on the other side, Envy, performing at their highest level we've seen in quite some time. Envy as a lineup, formerly under the banner of Together We Are Terrific, before signing with Envy, have failed to find measurable results since they made that signing. This was very much so a long overdue step into the light for that team. Despite finally making it to that long overdue final, Envy failed to put up much of a fight against Sentinels, losing 3-0. With that general information out of the way, as always, let's hop right into map stats. In stark contrast to what we saw with the level clash, the map play rates that we observed in North America's Pop Flash were far more typical of what we'd expect with Bind and Haven topping the lineup. From there it gets a little bit surprising with Split edging out Ascent, resulting in a total lineup of Ascent at 18% play, Bind at 28.2, Haven tied at 28.2, and Split at 25.6. Swinging over to map skews, things continued to be a little bit surprising. In a funny moment highlighting just how different the two regions are currently approaching the game, we have a case where half of the maps in the pool not only don't have the same level of skew as seen in Europe, but have the complete opposite directional skew. On Ascent, for example, we have a 51-49 offensive skew in North America, but just the day prior we saw a significant defensive skew in Europe. Following that trend, we see a 46-54 defensive skew on Haven in North America, while in EU we not only saw an offensive skew, but the most dramatic one on that map that we've seen since beta. In the cases of the remaining two, Bind and Split, the directionality is parred in the events from both regions, with Level Clash boasting a significantly higher defensive skew on Split, but Pop Flash boasting a slightly higher offensive skew on Bind. And that will bring us to the end of the map statistics, we'll hop right over to Agent Play Rates. In order to have a little bit more fun with these stats, instead of parring the current event against the global metagame across the current patch, I've decided to par Pop Flash directly against Level Clash so we can draw direct regional comparisons from their most recent events. Atop the ladder in North America, we have Cypher coming in at what is, frankly, an effective 100% play rate. He only went unplayed in a single game from Genji. After him we have Omen, who's now a mainstay at the top of pick rate ladders, and below Omen we have Jet, showing quite a significantly higher presence in North America than in EU. Moving on past Jet though, we hit the first one that is a titanic difference between the regions. Sova, who rose all the way to the second most played agent in Europe, falls to a mere 55% play rate in NA. And while a 30% drop in play rate is quite shocking just on its face, this is further confounded by the fact that some of the top teams in North America are quite fine of Sova. We see Sinatra on Sova on the regular, and TSM runs it in their most common composition. I think, however, the easiest way to explain this decrease in weight for Sova actually falls on the next agent on the list. 
Coming in with an astronomical increase in play rate, we see Phoenix at 41% in Pop Flash as opposed to his mere 3% in Level Clash. This speaks volumes about the North American playstyle and why they may be less inclined to put weight on Sova. If we take a look at the European metagame, there's a very strong preference for slow defaults, vision obstruction, and we still see that Sage has a significant presence in their meta. In that scenario, active information gathering that's also on a fairly quick cooldown is something that goes up in value exponentially. In North America by comparison, the playstyle is much faster. You have a stronger weight put onto flashes and quick movement into the enemy. In that scenario, active information gathering still holds plenty of weight, but when compared to the European meta, it's still significantly less. Continuing down the list, we have Sage at only 40% play, far and away the lowest meta presence we've seen her to date. Below her, we have Raze, who continues to show a significantly higher valuation in Europe. And below Raze, we have the new agent, Killjoy, coming in at just shy of 26%. We'll have a good chunk of the meta portion of this video dedicated to Killjoy, so stay tuned for that. Coming in tied at just above 14% play rate, we have both Reyna and Brimstone. Brimstone, we've sort of come to expect at this lower portion of the bracket, where he's fallen out of favor, instead people opting for Omen over him. Reyna, however, is a completely different story. Reyna, as I'm sure we're all perfectly aware of by now, rewards extremely skilled individual players who have the ability to take subsequent 1v1s, one after another, and consistently win them. The only player to find significant success on Reyna in Europe at this point is Scream of Team Liquid, who made up the entire 1.4% play rate for the agent during Level Clash. On the North American side of things, however, we have another player who's finding arguably significantly greater success in the form of Tens from Cloud9. Tens also counts for the entirety of Reyna's play rate here. While I'm sure we'll have significant compositional innovation by then, there will always be a part of me that wants to see a Reyna Titan clash between regions. Dipping down below the tie, we have Breach coming in at only 6.4%, slightly over half of the play rate that he saw in level clash, and rounding out the bottom, we have Viper, who escaped a 0% play rate for only a single tournament. With pick rates out of the way, let's swing over to win rates. Popping immediately back over to the narrative around 10s, the highest win rate agent in the tournament was Reyna. As I just mentioned, however, no one played it other than 10s. Reyna didn't have a 53% win rate, C9 and 10s did. That's not to discredit the win rate, however, obviously we are seeing put on display here that if you have a truly outrageous player, Reyna can be an absolute juggernaut in their hands. Moving down the list, we have Sage at 52.2%, tied with Brimstone. While the region seems to be abandoning these agents for the most part, it would appear that their decrease in play has been pushing their win rate up. While most teams are moving towards what they consider superior agents and play styles, those who are sticking to their guns and playing these agents that many would refer to as antiquated are finding great success with them. Below that pairing, we have Sova at 51%, continually at this roughly 51-52% to bracket. And for the first time in a long time, North America is doing fairly well with Rays. Maybe a few teams just finally started watching EU and picking the agent on the right maps. Next up, coming in at just over 50%, we have Phoenix, North America's trademark pick, which, while a lower win rate than was observed in Level Clash, it was played so little in Europe that I don't think that that statistic has any significant meaning to it. Coming in right below Phoenix, but still in that close to 50% window, we have both Cypher and Omen. We know that they're going to home into this space, typically, due to the fact that they are so prevalent. Below Cypher, we have Killjoy, who saw enough of a play rate that this stat should have some meaning to it, and it's quite a bit below Europe's. This is going to be something that's really interesting to discuss as we move towards compositions. Looking at the last few on the list, we have Jet coming in at only 48.7% far lower than we've seen her in the past. This dip I'm attributing to the fact that North America is increasingly finding better and better answers to the operator meta that Jet so effectively enables, where we see things like Tens ripping out Reyna on a regular basis, and Phoenix consistently showing a high pick rate, Jet's value will go down in proportion. Technically rounding us out, we have Breach at only 36.8%, the only one below him being Viper who 
wasn't played so she doesn't have a win rate. Before moving on, there's a little tidbit that if you follow me on Twitter you've already seen. And that is a hilarious dichotomy that's shown itself between these two regions in these two events. On the European side, in Level Clash, we had Breach the winningest agent in the tournament at 58% even. In North America at Pop Flash, we had Reyna at 52.8% atop the ladder. If you flip the region, those top agents both become the bottom. Reyna's 53% in North America became a mere 35% in Europe, and Breach's almost 60% in Europe becomes a nearly 40. While this is a bit of a silly statistic that I don't think anyone should read too deeply into, it brings to light something that I just wanted to highlight ever so quickly. And that's the difference between how each region plays their flashers. On the North American side, you have Reyna, a frag heavy, top of the ladder, highest ACS, kill bot. The player who is going to play that flasher is going to be running at the enemy team, guns a blazing. While if you look at Europe, Breach is almost the exact opposite. A more passive flasher who often flashes in their teammates as opposed to themselves. Finally landing on compositions, we have here the top 3 most played comps from Pop Flash. For the first time in what is a really, really long time, not a single one of these is a named archetype that I've highlighted repeatedly in the past. And while none of them land squarely on it, they all skirt dangerously near a composition I've been referring to as Shadow Flame, a sort of modernized interpretation of the Molten Core comp from early beta, I decided to stick with the World of Warcraft references and tie together Omen and Phoenix to land on the nickname of Shadow Flame. And while the original core of Cypher, Omen, Phoenix, and Sage has become increasingly infrequent in North America as they dip further and further from using Sage, the components are still all here in play. If we look at the top composition, if they were running a Sage instead of either the Jet or Sova, they would be on lock for the comp. In the second, if they replaced the Rays with a Phoenix as you see in the comps both above and below it, it would be running that archetype. And the same as the first applies to the third. These compositions formed an interesting mix, with the first accounting for just over 19% of the meta with a 51% win rate, the second accounting for just below 17% at a whopping 55% win rate, and the last dropping significantly to only 7.5% roughly and a mere 48% win rate. Highlighting a couple of these in turn, I first wanted to look at the middle composition. This lineup, with its 55% win, was the highest win rate composition of the event, excluding those with extremely low play rates. Unsurprisingly, it was played by the two finalists in Sentinels and Envy. And while that by itself isn't anything too shocking, something that is, is where they played it. This composition was played a total of 13 times, 12 of them were on split. Doubling back to that third composition, we have to touch on Killjoy. This is the first time that we're seeing her in real top tier North American gameplay. Unlike EU, who is running Killjoy predominantly as a Cypher replacement, North America inadvertently took my advice from a few videos ago and ran her as a Cypher partner. This pairing, while correct to my logic and suggestions, largely underperformed, putting up only 48% win. Some insight into why I think that is, is where they were played. If we look at the spread, the pair was played on Ascent 8 times, Bind 3, Haven 6, and Split 3. This is where things get dicey, because we see there's an abnormal concentration on both Ascent and Haven, at least relative to the other maps. The reason that's dicey is because I believe Killjoy is horrible on Haven. Not only that, I believe she's mediocre at best on Bind as well. It stands to reason, if we go back to the skews of each map that we looked at at the very beginning of this video and have seen repeatedly throughout the past as we've looked at competitive Valorant, a highly, highly defensively skewed core, like Cypher Killjoy, should predominantly be used and isolated to defensively skewed maps so that they can amplify that advantage. Bind and Haven, as we just saw, are not that style of map. With that in mind, if we look at the results for this composition on each of these maps, we see things pan out exactly as you would expect. 
a 1-2 record on Bind, a 2-4 record on Haven, drastically underperforming on the offensively skewed maps, but a 2-1 on Split and a 5-3 on Ascent, performing incredibly strongly where we would have expected them to. And so that will bring us to the end of Pop Flash and the end of the North American Ignition series. As I mentioned with the level clash, I'm excited to see where Valorant Esports are headed next, as I think that we're really starting to enter an era where compositional variety is trying to show itself a little bit. We have regional metagames very quickly establishing themselves. We see that North America is almost entirely backed away from Sage at this point, instead opting for far more aggressive styles that lean very heavily into flashes. I'm eager to see if that continues, or as we add more agents, that dynamic shifts again, and whether or not EU stays on their current track, or if we see them come to parallel the North American style over time. Super curious to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. What did you think about these last two events? Did you enjoy the Ignition series as an overall tournament, as sort of the preamble to Valorant Esports as a whole? And what do you think's coming next? I've heard a couple of rumors very recently that show that there are some exciting things on the horizon. So look forward to those. There will be plenty of computing competitives still to come. Per the usual, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find me all across the interwebs at Anders TV on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all the things you would normally expect. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.